Good afternoon, YouTube. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to ease back into things. I uh, had planned a different video, but I've seen a glut of these on YouTube this week. So, I will tease a future video. Uh, I'll be doing these two today, but uh, maybe next week I'll do the Greenberg, uh, Green Light Truck Jamboree. And compare it to the Johnny Lightning muscle trucks. But I have seen a ton of videos on trucks this week on YouTube. Uh, and when I finish showing you these two, then I'll ask a poll, uh, you know, sort of a question. And based on your comments, that'll be an upcoming video. Uh, here in the United States, we have Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. So, uh, it's going to be a short week, um, for me. So, uh, here we are Saturday. Um, and, uh, so we're going to fall back on my favorite thing, Mustangs. And these two early Fox body Mustangs, a 1979 and a 1982, uh, Mustang. The Fox body Mustang uh, started in 1979 and went till 1993. Uh, the Fox body platform, um, and that's what that means, um, the Fox platform was shared among the Ford Fairmont and the Mustang and then eventually other vehicles. Um, the LTD2, the Mercury Zephyr, um, the list, uh, the 1982 Ford Thunderbird. Um, a lot of people fail to realize that uh, Mustangs are very rarely, uh, only really recently, on their own platform. The original Mustang was based on the Falcon, then Fairlane, then Pinto, then the Fox platform, as I said, shared with the most vehicles, and then a modified Fox platform from 94 to 2004. Uh, so, um, this green light hobby exclusive, uh, Indianapolis, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 1979 Ford Mustang pace car. Um, I remember these well. I was 14 years old uh, when Rick Mears won the Indy 500 in 1979. Uh, this is a 2020 copyright. Uh, the card art is very nice on this uh, because it has Rick Mears on the back, the winner, and it has this beautiful picture of the actual pace car. Now, I'm going to pull this out, and I remember Ford went heavy with, the, with every manufacturer that is the official car for that year. They do the pace car and all the support vehicles. That's why you see a glut of um, General Motors and Ford, to a lesser degree, Chrysler, pace cars over the years and the trucks and station wagons and vans and so forth. So uh, this was a big marketing coup for Ford in 1979. Obviously, it had been arranged beforehand. Um, and these were very popular, and they only made so many... Uh, that came with the official pace car graphics and so forth on these. Now, this one uh, is a cream white, but they also came from the dealerships in silver. Um, I think the hood owns it. Yep, the hood opens on this. So let's take a look. So with this uh, green light, uh, if you've seen the other Fox bodies, they're all hard tops, either hatchbacks or uh, the notchbacks. This one has the T-tops. The T-tops were available from 1979 until 1988 uh, when they were discontinued. Um, Fox Buddy Mustangs were not even available with um, a factory sunroof um, after an, they, they were yeah they were they were never available with the sunroof, just the T-tops, which were also called Hearst hatches because that was a company that designed them. Um, and in 1982, they brought back the Mustang convertible. So this is the 
four square headlights and the egg crate grill. Um, and oh, there's a number of interesting features here, but let's just take a look. There is a nice detailed engine there with the HO four barrel carburetor and the dual air snorkels. Um, they're not lensed inserts, but they're nicely painted details for the headlights, turn indicators, and the Marshall, that was the company, um, the brand of fog lights. Now these don't have that um, name on, but I remember in 1979, that's what they came with. Um, so this is nicely detailed. They did a nice job with the stripes. And when you bought one of these, you had the option to leave the stripes off. Um, and some people did. And some of these, you can, uh, you know, when, when they're auctioned off, they'll have the full decals in the back. Uh, I can't imagine anybody would leave that off. Uh, these three spoke wheels um, became known as the TRX wheels. Um, and initially, were a metric wheel, um, whereas in the United States, we, you know, we always uh, size wheels as 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 inches. Um, with the uh, United States trying to go for the uh, metric system, but we failed um, because we're stubborn. Um, they actually went for special Michelin tires that were metric. And these days, if you have these wheels on a car, you can't get those metric tires. Michelin stopped making them. Um, just interest, uh, t interesting to me, side note, um, oh, there, come on, focus, there we go, I guess it's the white, yeah, there, three quarter, so you can see the segmented taillights, um, and you can see that with minor changes from 1979 to 1993, the quarter windows have these vents behind, and that stopped in the, uh, mid 80s. Uh, and then they went for flush glass. Now, nicely painted details. No license plate is there, but that's okay. So this is a metal body, metal base, rubber tire, green light. Um, let's see what we can see. This is number 2502, 79 Ford Mustang. And GL191. Now, even though it's a Fox body, it is a different casting because of the front end being different, rear end being different, and because of the T-tops. That is a major difference in the casting. Um, so you'll see these T-tops from green light on 79 to 82, I believe they have um, these T-tops. So that's a very nice model, and we're gonna compare that to this 1982 Mustang GT, part of the uh, John Lee Knightning Street Freaks Project in Progress. And this is the completed version. I don't have the uh, before. Custom gunmetal metallic. There goes your freak facts. This Mustang is a replica of an actual project car owned by Chris Corbill, uh, which uh, purchased in Texas in February of 80, uh, 94 and driven back to Michigan. Originally painted black, it was repainted to a custom gunmetal metallic in 2015 with semi-gloss stripes and graphics. So this is going to be a slightly modified, like a resto mod. Um, number five, let's see, what do we have here? On our Chris, Cor uh, I'm sorry, Corbett, 1982 Ford Mustang GT, release three, let's see. Round two, there goes all the other information on this. Let's get this poor thing off the card. Nice collector card in there. So, all those years I kept all my Johnny Lightning on card. Now I can't imagine leaving any of them on card. Nice. 
So again, Johnny Lightning has the T-top. Uh, they've left a big chunk here. Obviously, the T-tops would not have that massive bar. They would actually butt up against each other and have a thin, much thinner, maybe a two inch or so uh, on top metal bar. And they've decided to have this open, which, which is nice. Um, and there goes the four headlights and the egg crate grill, uh, the fog lights, the turn indicators, all the details are nice. These custom wheels are done nicely. So these are the Johnny Lightning plastic wheels instead of rubber. It is a metal body, metal base. Um, 1999 playing Mantis China. So this is probably an older casting for them, casting number 467. Um, I have a lot of Johnny Lightning Mustangs, just um, not this era. And I don't think this hood opens, which is unusual for Johnny Lightning. But you can see the 5.0 badge. And there's the plate with his name. Nice details. Not quite, the details aren't quite as good as and Johnny Lightning can be a little funny for scale sometimes, so as far as overall length and wheelbase, they look the same, and width. So, on this one, Johnny Lightning, I mean, I love Johnny Lightning, uh, so I'm not going to beat them up on scale. Um, so, also some history, so... <clears throat> In 1979, Ford didn't use the 5.0 5 liter designation. Uh, they called it just a 302 cubic inch engine because, again, we weren't going, uh, even though they did with the wheels, and they went with those wheels, those uh, TRX metric wheels, I think until 1983 or 82, I forget exactly. Um, but Fox body Mustangs have always been my favorites. I owned a 1991 LX 5-liter. Um, and so Mustangs were carbureted from the very beginning in 1964 and a half. The last carbureted V8 Mustang was 1985. In 1986, they switched all Mustang V8s to fuel injection. And there is a trio of Fox bodies from M2. So I'm really happy to add these to my collection and eventually, either before or after this upcoming Thanksgiving weekend, I will do, uh, I will open up and show all of my Fox body Mustangs. Um, and I, I don't, just don't feel I have enough. I, I don't know how many I have offhand, maybe 10, oh, more than that, probably about 12 or so. Um, so now we come to a question for you guys in comments and um, I'm, if I'm not going to actually type it down below because I want to see if people watch the video to the end so um, I'm looking for advice uh, Sol's diecast uh, um, Odyssey uh, is famous for doing the stack of Plano case um, Gary's diecast uh, recently did one and uh, um, so since I've shown off the new cases I have, I was thinking of sort of doing a stack of plane out, modified stack of case video. And I wanted to uh, ask what kind of theme should I do? Should I do all trucks or is that too much? Is that played out? Should I do, uh, again, I don't have enough to, should I do all Mustangs? I have more than enough, enough Mustangs. I have over 50 Mustangs. Or should I do one car from each brand? So, um, co uh, answering comments, uh, A for trucks, B for Mustangs, or C for one from each brand. Um, the, the case open, holds about 24 or so. I have more than 24 brands. Uh, I have more than 24 Mustangs. I have more than 24 trucks. So... Um, A, B, or C. 
in the comments or if you want just spell it out uh, Joe I want to see your Mustangs Joe I want to see your trucks Joe I want to see one of each brand uh, I won't make it that complex um, so thank you for watching thank you for watching while I was away thank you for commenting while I was away um, the jet lag is over so they, I hope there won't be any more, mis more mistakes like Joe turned the case 90 degrees uh, I, I appreciate uh, Chasing Diecast Cars comment there and of course uh, Sal, thank you for ribbing me. I actually look forward to that type of thing. I don't mind getting teased a little if I make a mistake. I, I, I'm not sensitive. Um, I, I'm an old man. I really don't care. So, uh, and I know I'm not incredibly old, but I'm older than most of you guys. Uh, probably by a good 10 years or more. Uh, especially, uh, um, that, oh my God, my memory. I want to say um, Matchbox Man Hot Wheel 24. Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed I can't remember off the top of my head. Very nice young man who does some great videos uh, on Hot Wheels and other brands and uh, especially showing his Tamika uh, collection. So uh, I wanted to give a shout out to him. Um, and uh, just, you know, thank you all for supporting me in this magical mystery diecast tour so uh have a good day bye